know if you guys can see it. It's a little glare of sim. Right. Let's take a look here. Oh. Doesn't look like it's set up yet. <laughs> There's nothing in there. We'll come back. Let's go to the next room. Gillian Audio. This is what's cool about this show. It's like brands you never hear. Oh. When I built these back in 2015, it cost me about six thousand. Improving the prices have gone way up. In comparison, he said it makes the Mark One sound And I usually charge twice whatever it costs. That's why the material has to be built a pair of speakers. So if you build them yourself, now Danny is also working on a version of this that has that it's got. Some cool other stuff. Well, this looks like Danny Ritchie design for sure. The same drivers I've got. MTM. Same kind of this, thing. This is the top half of the NX Audica. The NX Audica is this with four M165 mid range drivers below it. And they transfer from here, the crossover from here, mid range to those drivers is at 200 hertz. Whereas in this room, I'm crossing here at that about 80 hertz. So these are playing a lot lower than they would in that. The crossover point again, extreme is the same, 200 hertz. But in addition to the four mid range below, they have four mid ranges above it. Also, a you know, series parallel together, so those eight mid range they're not doing mid range, these are doing mid range. This is exactly the same with this, the NX Audica, the NX Street. This part of it is identical. It's a fucking CD. It's just uh, what your mid and upper base drivers are, are doing. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's now. It's always it's fun to hear about your own speaker. And you're either split in between four drivers or you're split in between four drivers. When you split it, the more drivers you split it between, the less work each one has to do. So the, the more effortless the sound is huge and the more dynamic impact it has. Okay. But even the NX screen is designed to be used with the subwoofer stack. It's not meant to be used by itself because it'll only play down to 60 hertz in a small room. And in a bigger room, it won't play down that bullshit in there. But just a lot of fucking. Well, the NX Audit goes to 60. You might get a little more out of the NX screen. You can get to 40. I have the NX screen. Yeah. Yeah. There's, they were designed to go with subwoofers too. So. Yeah, I use subs with mine. I recognize you from YouTube. Yeah, I got the N Extremes. I, in the back of my, I got a black. I, well, I painted them that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm very amateur. You're you're more more professional. You know how to do it right. <laughs> I watched I watched your build on that. Thank you. Yeah, it was painful, but you know, for the first time doing anything like it, it was I got it done. You know. But this is much better looking. And this one is the one that Danny does. This is a hybrid design. Yeah, I was noticing. Yeah, because uh, he came out with the NX Audica, and I had the old wedge. Okay. Uh, which was his first open baffle, uh, little little driver up there with this wing design. Right. And they were designed as just the monitor and to be paired with uh, triple eight servo subs. Okay. And that's how I built it the first time. And then I went to the 12s, and I liked the 12s better than the, the 212s better than the, the triple eights. Okay. And when he came out with the NX Audica, I go, I would really like to, to go from the wedges up to that. Same thing. But my room is this size. So, so I, yeah, you don't need. I can't fit four towers in. No, exactly. So yeah. I, I said, hey, Danny, how about coming up with a version that's just a monitor like the wedge? Yeah. And it was kind of like, well, if you want to, go ahead. <laughs> so 
And then you could use different exotic. I mean, you're using MDF here, or you're using. Uh, yeah, this this right now is coming as it, it came as a flat pack, just like the. Just the screens. same thing, okay. From the same guy. Same, same guy, okay. Uh, Jay Jay did these, and it this was at the time he was first developing the NXotic the cabinets. Okay. And what he did was, I told him what I wanted to do. And he said, "Well, I've got some stuff around here that uh, the top half of the baffles were fine, but the bottom half are buggered up." So he cut me out of a baffle and a short wing and a long wing. Yeah, there, cool. Sent them to me. I wired them up, sent them to Danny's to check to see if they needed to make any changes to the crossover, which he didn't. And so now I had a two-piece design that works well for me, because I'm on a second floor. Okay. And it's easier for me to carry these up, upstairs and downstairs. Okay. On the second floor. No, it's modular. Yeah. It's and modular. that's actually one of the suggestions I had with the N-Extremes. I think he should modular, yeah. <laughs> make it modular he, anyway. He, he's not selling this because he doesn't really like the two to split. Yeah. If, another way to think about this, were you familiar with the Super 7s? No. That's basically this speaker with different... Uh, Mid-range? Mid-ranges. It uses it used the, uh, the Neo 10s. Okay. Uh, and it was built as a single speaker with the exact same dual servo sub on the bottom. Okay. Same with his old uh, Super V. I gotcha. Now, have you ever tried different drivers than the? No. Okay. No, Danny's the designer. Yeah, I you just, just do the I just the do pretty. I I build the cabinets. I, right. I wire up. I build the crossovers. I wire the stuff up. But, but you don't do an extreme builds, do you? No. Yeah. I, that's one I won't. That's the <laughs> only one he has that I won't do. Okay. Because there's no way I can physically do that in my little 400 foot square foot shop. Yeah. And my shop is not much bigger than this room. Really. Yeah, yeah. It it's was. My, a, yeah. It's my slightly under two car garage. Yeah. Yep, I had to do it in my garage, and yeah, I wouldn't do it again. And I, I can't do that, and I can't keep it from getting dinged up. I can do the carcass, but I can't keep it from getting dinged up once I go to finish it. That's right, so yeah. I'm not it's not movable once you glue it, yeah. yeah so I'm That's why I thought, you know, if you just would modularize it, four drivers, like you've got here, then you've got your MTM, and four more drivers. And now uh, I build the Anexotica. That one I will do. Okay. I can maneuver. Yeah, that that's a little bit more yeah, reasonable. Those extra four drivers. Adds it seven just, foot tall or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven, seven and a half foot tall. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's Besides that, my wife took one look at his uh, NX X's or his NX 10's uh -huh. that were the open baffle version of his LS 9's or his LS, not the NX, LS 10's. Okay. That he took the line the source. The last yeah. ones he took to Rocky Mountain. And she took one look at that picture and says, not in my house, you're not. <laughs> so the only way I'll allow those in my house is if you're building for somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no aesthetic value to some of these line sources. But this looks really nice. Thank you. Yeah, your, your cabinet work is so good. Pretty. So yeah, anybody that wants to get a kit from Danny and have you do it. Usually what most of my clients do is they buy the kit from Danny uh -huh. and they ship have it, they drop, ship drop it. ship to me and uh -huh. then I work with them to figure out what, you know, what kind of finish they want. Now, if they want something in the crossover that Danny doesn't carry, uh -huh. I'm perfectly willing to put it in and then I buy those parts myself. Oh, so you actually do the crossover too? Yeah, I do the crossover Oh, that's too. great. Yeah, I, I do everything. The kit comes to me and I'm, okay. I'm building, I put it all together, I burn it in. And if you're close enough to me, I, uh, I'll deliver it and set it up for you for the same okay. cost of what it would be you know, for shipping. So that's like <clears> this pair complete uh, delivered anywhere within the continental U.S. or with your, like within 10 hours of me on a drive, it would be 17.5. Nice. Yeah. And then if you wanted to go with Jupiter caps and you know or something Google exotic, or anything like that, uh -huh. there, the upcharge would be whatever the cost of it would be. Now, and that that price would change when I go to. If you wanted some really exotic, expensive, or hard to work with veneer, or when I go to uh, solid wood up here, okay, then it's going to just be depend on the price. <clears throat> now, have you ever looked at Panzerholz as a material? Uh, I wouldn't use Panzerholz just because that's German. Uh, the U.S. equivalent is called Rich Light. Rich Light. Rich Light. Okay. Yeah, and I have looked at that. Okay. And I, and I would use it if someone wants it, but it's six hundred dollars for a four-by-four sheet of material. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. 
at some point I may contact if you can do it you know um, I think somebody you know will want one of Danny's in that Panzerholtz yeah. and I'll, I'll refer them to you because that's the thing is that I think it's a superior material and somebody like in your hands doing it right would really pay off I think in yeah. some some respects so yeah you don't get the exotic look of the woods yeah uh, but I guess you could paint it or you can do whatever. well yeah now you can paint it it comes in different colors and you only have to, like it's ready off when it comes to me to put the finish on that I have on those stands over there. Okay. That's a, a that's real a monocoat. That's a wing gay <laughs> that I built those stands out of. That's cool. That's really nice. These are, so you sell these as uh, monitor speaker stands? Yes. Those are really cool. How much do you charge for those? Depends on the wood. That's a thousand dollars for that pair with the wing gay. I've got another pair in another room that's made out of uh, Paduk, which was a less than half the cost of the wood, so that, that one I'd sell for 800 So, what would be cool is doing a Panzerholt stand. Yeah, I can do that. Put a it'd source point. <laughs> it'd be expensive, but if you're saving money with like a source point or one of Danny's design, yeah. you're getting performance already. Oh, you, you can't beat the performance. Yeah. I mean, 17.5? Yeah. What's that going to cost you? Yeah. On the on the normal retail market. Well, I, I have people over my house all the time, and yeah, they're like, I'm selling my hundred thousand dollar this, that, and the other. Yeah, I, I've had these compared to uh, the last time we had a show in 2019. There was someone in the room, and it was mentioned about people had made comments about uh, comparing them to some of the Wilsons. Oh, yeah. He said, "Yeah, I'm a Wilson owner, and I agree." <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's just a lot of value for what you get. And even if you take the value out of the equation, it's it's right up there. Yeah. It, everybody it, has different taste, you know. Everybody has different taste, and <clears> it, <throat> it, the electronics make a big difference. I mean, I've driven these things with uh, five watt tube amps. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2019, I had PS audio gear just like I do today. Right. But I just had the Stellar gain cell DAC. Oh, the basic stuff. Uh, yeah. And the Stellar uh, S300 power amp, uh, and now I'm running. BHK, this is all the Perfect Wave series. This is the new Direct Stream DAC Mark II. Okay. This is the BHK Signature Preamp. This is the uh, the Perfect Wave SACD transport. I've got the, the P3 power regenerator driving my uh, server. server and these this stack. Okay. And then those are the Stellar M1200 monoblocks. All right. Which is the hybrid tube. Uh, solid state design. Nice. And basically the rhythmic servo subs. Yes, rhythmic GR research rhythmic servo subs. So okay. it's truly being crossed over using that crossover or are you running this full range? I'm, I'm running this full range. Okay. Uh, normally what I do is, is I, instead of being a splitter box there, I put a filter in to roll. I only roll the bottom in right, first right. octave off. So I still cross over where these are naturally 6 dB down. Okay. And that just depends on the room. In this room, that's right at about 80 hertz. And in a lot of rooms this size, it tends to be about 80 hertz for these. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that the uh, GR Research and Extremes, that's what I found as well. I, I It doesn't go that low. You think all those base drivers, yeah. but it needs the sub. It needs the sub. And, uh, and Danny designed it to be played yeah, with the sub. Yeah, right, yeah. I mean, uh, I have no qualms with that because the performance you get. Oh man! In 2019, we had we had the almost <coughs> there would be a trifecta, but there was only two of us. I had this setup up here on the second floor, and Danny had his in extreme system with his triple servo set up on the first floor. Nice. So people got a good yeah so yeah killer value yeah. So he didn't come out for this one though. Uh, he does, he's not showing a room. He'll be here tomorrow as an attendee. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll run into him. Um, well, this is cool. Uh, so you have your server. You can even play USB stuff, huh? Yeah. So I might give you a... One thing that I like about this show is that, unlike normal shows, you can sit down and enjoy for a little yeah. while and not get, you know... That's why this show has been called by more than one person the Woodstock of audio. Yes. Shows. It's so much... 
more relaxed than I just came from Munich. It's crazy. Yeah. You, you're just a bit getting bumped into. It's, now, this is so this is so back. cool. And yeah, obviously not the volume of rooms and the attendance, but nope. a different vibe that I really like. So I rarely get to bring like a USB stick mm -hmm. and play certain recordings that not only are good, but they don't <laughs> violate copyright and yeah. all that other stuff. So yeah, whatever yeah. you want. I mean, I I can plug the USB stick in. I can play them up there. I'm, I'm running Rune. Okay. So and I have Cobas on the Rune. So. All right. Well, maybe I'll stop the video. Mm -hmm. We can do that, and then I'll record some. Because I think people should hear this setup. Okay. Yeah. As much as they can from a YouTube, but I mean sometimes you can get some valuable takeaways. So. And what really amazes people is the the depth of bass that comes out of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this will give you an you know another chance which you rarely hear at the show is the gr research speakers mm -hmm. at a show so yeah. yeah let me go ahead and stop the video maybe we'll play some music yeah. 